Hi, I'm Heather Podeska, and welcome to Thrive, a show where we bring you tips, resources, and people to help you grow your business and live a more abundant life. My first guest has been in business for over 13 years as a financial advisor and has had a successful business as a financial advisor. She has over 20 years' experience in sales, and recently she's launched a new entrepreneurial endeavor called Miles and Heels Productions. She's also a philanthropist and a community leader and is currently the president of the Winchester Chamber of Commerce. And I am so thrilled to have my friend here. (laughs) Welcome to the show, Kim Miles. Thank you. I'm so thrilled to be here. This is an honor to be your first guest. I'm so proud of you that you're doing this show. I'm always proud of everything that you do, but to be here is just simply fun for me. So thank you for asking me. Well, thank you for being here. And the one thing I forgot to mention is that you are a huge Shoe fashionista. Oh, I can't live without my shoes. They make me perfectly happy. Quite frankly, I was having a tough day today, but when I picked out the shoes I was going to wear and I knew <laughs> I was coming here to be with you, just everything fell in line. So it was it was all good. Okay, we all have we all have our things to get us through. We do definitely do. But I'm really glad that you brought that up because I'm not going to share any details. But I, you sent me a text this morning that said life threw you a curveball this morning, and it was like ah. And you know what? You showed up here anyway. You came and you're, you're present and you're doing your thing. And that's so much a part of what happens when you're an entrepreneur. It's not no. a straight line. No, never. It's never a straight line. Yeah. If it were a straight line, it would be easy and I think everybody would do it. That's right. Exactly. And yeah, I mean, things, life is going to happen. You know, your days are going to go off schedule. You're going to be thrown unexpected curveballs and I think it's how you react to them and how you process them and it's about how you pick yourself up from them and how you go on with the rest of the day or the evening you know if you think about it if something happens to you that morning you don't have to derail your entire day you know process it deal with it maybe take some time for yourself cry kick scream do what you need to do but there's the rest of the day for you to be productive or happy or peaceful about whatever is you know on to the next chapter if you will yeah I mean and it sounds like what you're talking about is resilience I think so and I think having the confidence in yourself to be able to appreciate that you're human and um, nobody's perfect and life doesn't always go exactly according to plan Um, and I think it's about how we pick ourselves up you know and, and to be strong for yourself is an important model for yourself to say, you know what, I've been through way worse and this too shall pass and so this is the new reality for the day, so how do we deal with it? That's right, and when you're an entrepreneur, you have to deal with it. That's right. <laughs> you have to deal with There's it. not all your minions, That's you know, right. necessarily. I mean, you'll get there one day, yeah. but it's you. And, you know, you're the, you're the janitor, the CEO, the paper filer, you know, the, the marketing person. You're the everything. So you got to deal. That's right. And you do it so well. Well, you're kind. Thank you. I, 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 I think I've learned from all of my friends and my mentors. You know, I always tell you how much I learn from you every day. Whenever we go out and we do our fun networking events, we always have such a good time. Yes. And And um, we always leave that car ride really inspired by each other. And I think that's what it's all about. And that's what drives me is is, um, surrounding myself with other successful female businesswomen and other successful female entrepreneurs because I learn from them and I grow with them. And um, to be able to inspire each other is really, I think, at the heart of what I'm trying to do with my business, Miles and Heels Productions. Yeah, and I want to hear more about that. But before we jump into that, what you were saying about all these different people, I always think it takes a village. Oh, God, yeah. It takes a, you know, it takes a village from the point of view of having friends and support. It takes a village from your family. Yes. You know, because it's, you know, it's not like you're getting your 401K <laughs> and your steady paycheck and your benefits. It's what are those things? <laughs> yeah, right, exactly, exactly, exactly. So it takes a lot of patience and support from your family, and you need role models, you need vendors mentors all of those all those things yeah I mean you know I think if you were to ask me you you know who who do I draw my strength from or um, you know who who do I find are my mentors or or who help keep me on track I think you really listed so many of them I mean I first and foremost you know I'm very blessed I have a wonderful marriage and my husband supports me 150 percent and I feel so fortunate for that because 
you know, that's really half the battle. You know, there's somebody there who is my cheerleader, he has my back, he wants to see me succeed. Um, and whoever your partner in life is, um, you know, hopefully you have that support. My family, my extended family, and my friends who are in my extended family. Um, I really try to surround myself with people who are going to be honest with me. Um, they are my cheerleaders for sure, but honesty I think is really critical. Um, I've always prided myself on the fact that I'm an honest friend. I don't really feel that a true friendship is such that um, people are, uh, you know, feeding you lines. Um, you know, I want to surround myself with people who are going to be honest with me. And so it's the same with my business. If something isn't working or succeeding, I want to be able to turn to that person and that friend and say, here's what the situation is. Can you give me some honest feedback? And to draw from that and to learn from that. Um, and so it does take a village. And um, I think that you learn as you go along who you should be surrounding yourself with. And sometimes the first people you thought might be a huge asset mm -hmm. in that capacity, you might learn that that's not the right, the right fit for you. And it's okay to acknowledge that and, and to move on too. Yeah, and also everybody, uh, one of my favorite lines is don't compare your beginning to someone else's middle. 100%, yeah. And we're all evolving over and over and over again. So you, 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 know, you, you recently started a new business. Yes. New, so even though you've been in business for many years, this is new for new territory. New territory. Yeah. Whereas someone else might have done this for a long time, but they they're new at something else. Correct. So we're all always in this cycle. We're always evolving. Right. Sure. So someone who might have been a resource for you at this point in your life is not now, but they might be again later. Absolutely. So, because you don't know where the overlap is going to happen for you or for them. Yeah. So. And I think you know, as you grow your network, I mean, one of the things that. I really have built over the past, as you said, 20 plus years of being in the professional world um, is just a super solid network of um, men, women, teachers, leaders, uh, leaders in industry, um, friends and family. And, you know, I feel so good about the fact that whatever the scenario is, I've got this big Rolodex. Am I dating myself by saying Rolodex? But um, I've got, you know, this big Rolodex that I can feel confident enough to pick up a name and and even if I haven't spoken to them in a while you know if I know that they would be a good person for me to tap into for help or knowledge you know I feel really great about the fact that I can call them and confidently say hey it's Kim and I'm having an issue with such and such and you know could you maybe help guide me through this process and you know so never burn a bridge and um, be kind always to people <laughs> and uh, you know just surround yourself with those resources absolutely so I want to take a step back mm -hmm. because not everybody's an entrepreneur not everybody launches a business so when did you know you have these degrees and mm -hmm. training when did you know that you wanted to have your own business and, and what do you think was the spark for that it actually was pretty definitive which is kind of remarkable I, I don't think that really happens for everybody um, but for me it was pretty definitive um, what really happened was I was doing sort of an iteration of what I do now, but I was doing it on behalf of one particular organization. And I'd been doing that on a volunteer basis and having the best time. It was so much fun. And then I ran one of my programs, as I had done for the past 10 years, and it just sort of dawned on me, you know, with the feedback that I received from that one particular event, the feedback was so overwhelmingly positive. And people had said to me, you know, Kim, you should really think about doing this kind of on a more formal basis and sort of in different avenues. And that's when it sort of dawned on me that I had been taking these talents and dedicating them to a single organization when perhaps I could spread the wealth and I could share my talents and my resources a little bit further and wider and cast a wider net. And so about a year ago, exactly, actually, yes, about a year ago, um, is when this whole process kind of came to pass. So I had been doing this in some form for somebody else. It was just a matter of me now putting on my own hat with my own stamp on it and doing it for myself and spreading a, a wider net. So what is the thing that you are referring to? The thing that I am referring to. Um, my passion really lies in empowering other women in business to become their best selves. Mm -hmm. And so organizations will hire me 
to really add that spark to their programming. So if you think about if you've gone to a business conference and it's sort of the same old thing that they've done year in and year out, they will hire me to MC or facilitate a panel discussion, run an icebreaker or a networking activity. Basically, if you think about it, it's sort of like if Oprah and Ellen had a love child, <laughs> it would be me. You know, I'm very much, uh, it's very important to me that there be meat on the bone. Yeah. There's got to be meat in the message of what we're doing. Right. And there has to be something important about it. But it's about having fun mm -hmm. while doing it and, you know, an entertainment value to it because I think when you're having fun, you hit upon it before, you learn. And if you walk, if you spend money on some sort of seminar or some sort of workshop and you've spent all this money and it was chock full of info, but it was a super snooze fest, you're going to walk out of there and you're just not really going to have been engaged. You know, it's so funny. I just heard a thing about, it was a quote from Joel Olstein. you know. The oh, sure, yeah. That, and he, he was saying that smiles, um, what was it? If you smile, if a friend smiles at you, it's worth the same endorphin rush as getting a five thousand dollar raise. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, it, you know that it really, really impacts your chemistry, your psychology, and I just think it's one of the best networking, sales, business. It's your best accessory besides a great pair of shoes. I think a smile is your best accessory. That's for sure. Are we going to see the shoes at any point? Well, maybe I'll take them off and I'll show them to the <laughs> camera. You never know. You never know. But I, I agree with you, and I, I think that. But um, if my goal, what I feel that I bring to the table is that if I can cre create excuse me, a community and bring people in and embrace them and give them the tools and the power and the knowledge that they need to be the best version of themselves, then I've done my job. You know, I, I always create something that's fun and social and engaging, but they're definitely learning when they come to any of my programs. Well, and the other thing about you, Kim, is that you, you haven't said is you are a rock star rock star salesperson. Oh, thank you. I mean, is it okay to talk about what the event was that you were doing before? The women? Oh, sure. Yeah. So I, I ran something called Women Helping Women. Which was, if you live in Winchester, you know it's like, hat was the event, women's event of the year every year and sold out months. Yeah, months. thank you. I mean, I really appreciate that. And that was something of which I'm incredibly proud. Um, Working with the chamber and the, the, the folks of the chamber with whom I worked, uh, you know, I, I certainly, it does take a village. I couldn't do it by myself. There were lots of people who helped. Um, but we did it together, collectively, as a team. And it was wonderful and rewarding. And the camaraderie and the sense of community that it built was overwhelming. And it's something of which I'm incredibly proud. It's just that I was doing it for a singular organization. And I wanted to sort of take it and make it my own and bring it to more people. And that's exactly what I've done. So I've done work in places like Babson, Holy Cross, um, with the Winchester Hospital. Um, I work with different law firms in the city, um, you know. And then I run my own events that I, when I think of people that I find interesting, leaders in industry that I want to share with an audience, I'll create my own signature event and invite the public to that. So it really it can it can run the gamut. So I want to know where this. When I talked to you, was it a, maybe a year and a half ago, and this was brewing? Yeah. And it, I felt like there was a lot of soul searching going on. Oh, gosh, yeah. I mean, I was crying with you, and I think we were eating a sandwich at the <laughs> coffee shop, and I was like, what are we going to do? You know, and yeah, I was, I it was soul searching. But I think, yeah. I think everybody goes through that. And um, I'm curious about what what that deeper connection is for you, because you're so, you have your talent, you have your skill. You have this business model mm -hmm. of sales and, and production and entertainment, which you are glorious at doing. Thank you. But underneath that, there's something else. There's, a, I think, from knowing you in your heart, that there's this deeper sense of purpose and mission. And I was wondering if you could just talk a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, when we were together, that was a really interesting time for me because I think it was a serious transition time for me. And I think what it was was grappling with yourself to say, do I have the strength? to go and pursue this. I mean, this is an idea, this is a kernel, this is a thought, this is a, you know, wow, what, what if we did this? You know, it's just this thought. And then it's about putting, it's about executing, it's about putting the wheels in motion and actually doing. And a lot of people have said to me, and I, I, it, it, this is something that I hear all the time, and, and 
I, I, I guess it must be true. You know, a lot of people say, Kim, a lot of people talk about doing things, but you actually go and do them. Mm -hmm. And I guess I've just sort of always been that kind of a person. The big joke amongst my friends is be careful what you tell Kim because the next thing you know, you'll have your own band, your own company, and your own whatever, you know, because that's just the kind of person I am. You know, if somebody says, I'd like to try this, well, I say, heck, let's do it. You know, what, what's stopping you? So I think what was going on with me, with you that day or that time period was I was in that position where I was saying, I'd like to try this, but what is it going to entail? And who am I going to enlist? And do I, is it the right time in my life? And it was so, I think you, you hit the nail on the head. I think it was a little bit of soul searching for myself. Yeah. And why do you feel so compelled? Because you, you do such a fabulous job of a really shining a light on women, women business owners, doing events for women. I know, I, I, from what I understand, the programs that you do are really, really focused on helping men and women, but r embrace their confidence and have that um, confidence, really, confidence to do yeah. the sales and to embody more of who they are. Where does that come from? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty simple, actually. Um, first of all, you know, I've always been on stage, like you, uh, you, you know, I don't know if you know this, but Heather's an opera singer. <laughs> I should throw that in there. She's amazing. Um, but, you know, like you, I've always been on stage, I've acted, I, I've sung, you know, that's really my passion in life is, is to entertain. And what I realized is I, I have always had a wonderful sales career um, and I've worked very hard at it. Um, but what I recognized was that in the fields I've been in professionally, I've often been a female playing in a male-dominated space. And if you don't have the confidence from the get-go, you're just going to get swallowed up. And I inherently have that confidence, but what I recognized quickly is so many other women lack the confidence. And so I sort of feel, not to sound corny, but I do kind of feel like it's my mission in life, <laughs> it certainly is my passion, mm -hmm. to want to share that confidence with other women and to let them know that it's in them. It's just about bringing it out in them. And if, if that's what I'm here to do with my programs and being hired by other organizations, um, like you said, I do run programs for both men and women, but my passion does lie in lighting that spark for women to really live to their best potential. I mean, I don't claim myself, to, I'm not a life coach, I'm not a business coach. I really am about creating communities mm -hmm. to give people the tools. I don't profess myself to be the expert in everything, but I create the community and bring in the resources mm -hmm. so that other women can learn from each other and we can lift each other up. Because when we band together as women, there's nothing we can't accomplish. Absolutely. I've watched it, I've witnessed it, mm -hmm. I've lived it, I'm living it now. Um, and so that, that's where it comes from. That, that's the, the compelling nature for me. You know, it's so interesting. I was telling you earlier that I went to the Boston, um, Boston Women's Business Venture Capital Summit today, mm -hmm. and they, they had in entrepreneurs pitching to angel investors. And pretty much across the board, the feedback from the investors were that the women were not asking for enough money. We never go for the ask. You gotta go for the ask. If you're a salesperson and you don't ask for the sale, you have not, if you haven't gone for the close or asked for the sale, you know, you got to get out. I mean, you've got to go for, you got to go for the close. And so if you're an entrepreneur mm -hmm. and you're not sealing that deal and asking for what it is that you want, mm -hmm. but think about it in any scenario in your life. Think about it with your kids, right? Mm -hmm. If you want your kids to make their bed and you haven't asked them to make their bed, yeah. you've danced around it sort of, why the heck are they going to make their bed? <laughs> I don't dance around asking them. <laughs> I'm sure you don't, <laughs> but I'm sure there are other people who do. Um, but you know, in anything in life, you've got to go for the clothes. Right. You got to do it. So, what do you say to the person? So, like, give us a tip. I'm shy, okay, and I and I feel like oh, I know I'm good at what I do, but I'm not comfortable selling myself, mm -hmm. and I'm not I'm not an opera singer. I'm not used to being in front of the camera mm -hmm. and performing, and I don't have a sale. What can I do? I think it's very important. I get I get approached by introverts a lot, and I do a lot of um, I, I do a lot of I, I've developed different curriculum to help people, you know, network properly and things of that nature. And the introverts will always come to me and they'll say, you know, a lot of what you're talking about is great and it's resonating with me, but I'm an introvert, and so how can I use that to my advantage? And, and if you're saying if you're this shy person or an introvert, what I say is, play up your strengths. Okay, so here's the deal. If you're a little bit shyer or you're an introvert, maybe you're not going to work a room like Kim Miles or Heather is going to work a room, right? As my husband always says, nobody can work a room like my, my, like my wife. 
But my husband, who's very social, but he's sort of the opposite. He's like a great one-on-one -on -one guy. Mm -hmm. So what I would say to the people who are a little bit more introverted is, it's not about going into the room and, and connecting with 100 people. It's about making one great connection with one great person. Mm -hmm. And it's about where that connection might be able to take you. So play up that strength. And don't necessarily waste your time talking to the one person. You have to learn how to politely excuse yourself yeah. to get to a person that you can engage with. But use that just because you're shy doesn't mean you can't engage. Yeah. There's a difference, right? Mm -hmm. You can be shy, but you can still engage. Right. And I think that, you know, know your strengths and play to your strengths. That's what I would say to that person. Yeah, and um, you always have to remember that you assume that everybody else is confident and is just, you know, really an extrovert. Other people are, are insecure too. So sometimes people are really grateful when you approach them and make that first connection as yes, well. Yes, yes. And I, I mean, my, for me, I've always used the tool, perhaps the biggest tool in my tool chest, if you will, is my sense of humor. And to be able to diffuse something with humor or to open up, you know, a situation with just kind of letting people let their guard down. Um, and I know that that's not everybody's forte, but I, I just kind of feel like, you know, if you can just kind of make something relatable, we're all just human, mm -hmm. right? We're all like, you're here at this networking event and I'm here too and you have a pretty dress on and I'm like, oh my God, I wish I could wear that dress. You know, like cr crack something, just break the ice, do yeah. something that's just going to make it a human moment, yeah. right? Not so, so in, it's not so life important, you know? That's right. Yeah, that's right. it's and just think, human. And I think a lot of people have misconception about what networking actually is. Oh, big time. Yeah, it's it's why I developed an entire curriculum around best practices surrounding networking. It's because they don't really know how to do it properly. And, and so what would, you say, what, what would you say networking is for? Wow, that, that's an amazing question. Um, I think, you know, I think a lot of people think what networking is, is going in and talking about yourself. And what people don't really realize is effective networking is really 90% listening and 10% talking. Because when you're listening, you're learning, and you're thinking, you're processing and saying, is this somebody that I you know, connect with, I have something in common with, we can work together, they might know somebody that might help me get to the next level of my business. If you're not listening, you can't process that information. If you're always talking and spouting off jargon about what you do, and so I feel that networking is a perfect, delicate balance of you interviewing other people and other people interviewing you. Mm -hmm. And just finding the real people in the room, right? Yes. Don't you just want to find the genuine people in the room? That's what I always look for anyway, the genuine people in the room. I always look for the story. I always want to know people's story because, you know, we've been around the sun a few times at this point. Yeah. How did you get here? Yeah. How did you get in this room? Yeah. Why are you here? Yeah. What's your story? So I get, I like that. That helps me when I'm nervous. I'm, I really want, I genuinely want to know someone else's story. I mean, how many times have you and I, we've sort of like pinged each other and we've said, are you going to this? And we're both like, oh, we're tired. It's been a long work week. But we both bolster each other up. Well, come on, let's go together. We'll have a cocktail. It'll be fun. And we always have a great time, yep. you know, because I think we, we go in with the right attitude. Right. And at the end of the day, if we met one great new person, so we had a good cocktail and met a great new person. And that's another good tip, is go with a friend. Go with a friend is great. Yes. But I think you and I are really successful at not being married at the hip. You gotta go with your friends, mm -hmm. but you gotta kinda divide and conquer, because yes. you're there for a purpose. Right, right, right. Exactly. Um, and you are jingling away on I am, I'm sorry. I hope that's not terribly distracting. No, no, I'm loving it. And I wanted to talk to you for a minute about fashion. Oh, shall I show my shoes? This is a good I segue to show showing my shoes. They really are. Aren't they just you can't see, my best Vanna White? Cameo. Camo fur. Camo fur. Only Kim Miles. Camo really? Fur. Nothing better than a little camo fur <laughs> during the week. That's what I say. But uh, one of the things that I think about when, when you're a woman and you're an entrepreneur, you don't have any limits. And I think that that's something that I really, you know, that we share is a love of fashion. Yes. Um, because I think that's something that women get a little boxed in, not all women, but women sometimes get a little boxed in, especially if they've come from a corporate experience. Yes, yes. So uh, tell me your philosophies of what your thoughts are about entrepreneurship and fashion. I think you should always really be true to your authentic self. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think I've owned a business suit since 1989, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. And you're a financial advisor. And I'm a financial advisor. <laughs> so I, I literally, I mean, I will go to my appointments and I will be rocking my camo fur shoes because 
that's who I am. Mm -hmm. And I'm never not going to be myself because people work with me because they like who I am and I'm knowledgeable obviously, but people buy from people they trust mm -hmm. and people they like. How many times have you called something uh, 800 number and if maybe if you haven't gotten somebody that you feel you're jiving with you're like I'll just hang up and I'll call back and I'll try again you know it happens or if you go to the store and you know you find somebody that you're jiving with but so my point is is that I really do feel that my particular sense of fashion resembles my personality it's a little it's a little a little out there a little fun a little bold a little big a little shiny and sparkly um, but it's true to my authentic self but I do always feel that fashion should be about being comfortable in your own skin. There's nothing worse than wearing something that you think is trendy or fashionable, but you're just pulling, tugging at it all day long and mm -hmm. trying to make yourself feel comfortable in something that you're not. So just live your authentic self through your fashion. Yeah, and I think that that's absolutely true. And I think that there's more, um, more leeway to do that when you have your own business. And I think that people should embrace that a little bit. Yeah, um, yeah. But you said, you started to use words to describe yourself, so I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> oh, here we go. You, your personal brand in three words. Ooh. Um, fun. Fun. Which sounds so such like a, a, a pedestrian word, but really fun for sure. Yes. Um, out of the box is one word. It's three words, but it's it's one word. <laughs> since it's out of the box. Thank you. you okay, it's it's out of the box. It's, it's of the box. I, I'm definitely an out of the box thinker, uh -huh. and I don't like to think about things the way everybody else has. I try to put a, a spin on them, and um, I would like to think that that what I'm doing and and my brand is is elevated. Like it's at a new level. Like it's something you haven't done before. Yeah, I'm trying to make it new and fresh and fun, and so. I, I never really want it to be the same old thing. I'm trying to elevate my game so that you, you all elevate your game. And that you do very well. Well, thank you. So um, before we finish up, tell us what you have, your next projects, things that are coming on the horizon, if there are things that people can experience, your workshops, events, that productions that you have in coming up, if someone wants to hire you for their company, how do they, what's, what's on the horizon? Yeah, absolutely. Well, there's so many amazing things coming down the pipe. Um, most, um, most most quickly coming down, uh, the pipe is actually next week, uh, the Winchester Hospital Foundation, we're having a, it's actually sold out at the moment, um, but there's a wait list going. Uh, at the Winchester Country Club, I'm going to be interviewing two uh, breast cancer doctors and we're celebrating sort of breast cancer awareness. And um, an ongoing project I have is something called the Second Chapter Sisterhood, which is something that has resonated really, really amazingly throughout my community um, of followers, which is about women that are facing sort of that next chapter in their lives. Perhaps they're an empty nester, they're trying to get back into the workforce, divorce, um, you know, women who are widows, just really trying to figure out what's next for them. And it's about bringing them together and giving them tools and resources. That community, right? That community that yeah. I've created. Yeah. And I'm also going to be interviewing Heather Abbott, the Boston Marathon survivor who lost her leg and got back into her high heels. Wow. And that's on May 14th, and tickets are going to be going on sale very, very soon. So all of this information is on my website, milesinheels.com. Excellent. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you so, so much for being my first guest. This was out of, the, out of my greatest expectation that you would be here, and you are living, living your brand of fun out of the box and totally elevated in my book. Thank wow. you so much. Thank you for everything that you do for me, because you serve as a mentor to me all the time, and you know how much I love you. So thank you for asking me, and it was a pleasure to be here. Mwah. Thank Mwah. you so much. Thank you. And thank you for joining us for Thrive. I look forward to the next show, and here's to hitting all your high notes. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>